Coming up in the next week, I have had the Nintendo Switch exactly one year. And while originally a lot of people remember it was kind of a struggle to get me to buy one, only because there wasn't one singular game that I wanted at first. I can safely say as a spoiler for this video as a year in review of having the Nintendo Switch that I have had a lot of fun with this console, docked and undocked. And the first year of any console in your ownership or in your possession is very important because it's one year that you will always remember and will leave a lasting imprint on that console and honestly leave a lasting opinion for you on that console as well. While the hardware was always perfect to me, I picked up this console and it fit perfectly in my hands. Now I have very little hands so that's something to keep in mind. The Joy-Con controller was great to hold, the actual Switch itself was great to hold as well. Um, both docked and undocked, I love this console. The screen is beautiful, the games that you get to play in it look great. Uh, it's honestly just a great overall hardware experience. But for me, the Nintendo Switch's beauty doesn't come exactly from the hardware. Even though the hardware is unbelievably fantastic and the Switch console that I got in my bundle was fantastic and it is fantastic. I think the greatest thing about the Switch and the reason that I've loved the Switch for this past year is software. It's video games. And that's the same with every Nintendo console. They're not a console that's made to be 4K, 8K graphics with these amazing details and textures. These games focus on other details and really just focus on how fun it is to play a game and how beautiful a world can be. And I can safely say that even though these games would be games that a lot of people are like, well, they just don't look that great. I disagree, first of all, but also these games are just astoundingly amazing to play. All that we can hope is that the species will be strong enough to prosper on its own. The reason I bought the console in the first place, Pokemon Let's Go, and I know that's a bit controversial, people saying, why would you buy it for Pokemon Let's Go? Well, I'm a big Pokemon fan, and I know, I know people don't like Pokemon Let's Go, but for me, I love that game. I had so much fun catching a bunch of Pokemon, going through this original world that I went through as a kid, and going through it again, and in a whole different perspective. Not only that, but I was able to play with my nephew as well, who also played Let's Go, and actually clocked in like 110 hours on the game, and caught every single Pokemon, and we got to beat the Elite Four together, side by side, and to me, seeing my nephew beat a game that technically I've been playing for years, was a charming and special moment that honestly, I don't think I could have had if it wasn't for the Nintendo Switch. Now, my nephew has also gone back and played a bunch of the 3DS games as well in Pokemon and loves them as well. So that's one thing I will always have to thank for the Switch. It has created a bond between me and my nephew that is unbreakable at this point. When before, I don't think we had anything in common. And now here we are playing Pokemon together. And you can tell just from the way I'm talking, I'm grateful for the Nintendo Switch at this point. I'm grateful for it. Another game I got to play as well was Fire Emblem Three Houses. This is a game that I saw someone say on Twitter it united the internet 110%. Everyone was playing this game at one point. Every single individual was just playing this game. Not everyone, of course. But there's people who never played JRPGs was playing this game. There's people who never played JRPGs or Japanese games in general, and they were doing all, like, four campaigns. This was insane. You couldn't even, like, blink without seeing someone being like, I just beat the third campaign! in Fire Emblem Three Houses. And it's like, dude, last week you wouldn't even touch one of these games. That's amazing. That's awesome. And for me as well, a person who's only ever played one Fire Emblem game, to be able to play a game like Fire Emblem Three Houses was fantastic. Combat is absolutely fluid and amazing. It feels good to be strategic. It feels good to have your specific characters that you want to go into battle. Every single movement you make, you get to think about it and it's fun because even if you fail, even if you fail, you know how to do it next time. You know that if you make a mistake, it's almost fatal, but at that point it feels real. It feels kind of realistic, even though it's not realistic, even though that the game is not made to be realistic. It feels real while you're playing it because of how emotionally attached to these characters you become. The world that you get to go around in this game feels so good to traverse in. The school becomes familiar as time goes on. At first, you're kind of wandering around wondering where everything is, but as soon as you know where everything is, you feel like an actual teacher going through this world. You've now understood where the, the teacher's area is, where the, the classrooms are, where the cafeteria is, where the, uh, where the training rooms are. It feels so good to get 
accustomed with this world and to talk to people in this place as well because they're always in different places they always have different problems they always have different stories and i love that you get to interact with almost anybody as long as you take the time to invest in their character and that's totally a choice and i love that about this game the week i got the nintendo switch xenoblade chronicles 2 became on sale crafty nintendo but well done what a good idea and oh my god this game this game, I played Xenoblade Chronicles on the 3DS, and anyone who's played a Xenoblade Chronicles game knows that their open worlds are almost second to none. It is crazy the scale that they get with these games, the height of some structures, how the world seems almost seamless as you're traveling around it, barely any loading screens or cutscenes that separate different parts of the world, and it rewards you constantly for going higher and higher and deeper and deeper and into more dangerous parts of the game. It never says, hey, you shouldn't go here. There's warnings that maybe the enemies are too strong here, but there's always that thing in the back of your head, if I just sneak past this gigantic monster that I can't defeat right now, is there a special item behind him? And that feeling is so good. Not only is the world amazing though, the towns are great. The characters are charming and the voice acting is charming. The characters are so well designed as well and every single part of the world, especially the towns, feels like it's livable and it's breathing and it feels like there's something there to each part of the world. There is kind of a different culture when you go to each land and I love that word because in a video game it's so important. If you want to be the pinnacle, if you want to be the top of open world games and games like this, you need to have every town feel like it's something different as you're going to it and I think this game does that extremely well. Of course the combat is great too, I feel like they streamlined the first game's combat, I think that the boss battles in this game are extremely fun and also I think the story impacted me in a lot of ways too. I loved going on this journey with these characters and I love seeing exactly what they're doing and like, guys, it's a weird thing to say, with great use of like skylines, you can always, see, almost always see the sky, unless you're in a cave or something or a cave city, but when you see the sky in this game, it's hard to not have your breath taken away. Link's Awakening is another game that I played this year on the Switch. I played the original Link's Awakening on the Game Boy at the start of the year, I'm not going to spoil anything about it, but it is a perfect, it is almost a perfect game. I always equate it to a bowl of cereal. It's like, it's hard to fuck up. It's just like, if you fuck up a bowl of cereal when you're making it, I think it's time to like give up. It's, this is just such a fun game. Not only for its interesting and detailed story, it's intricate like twists and turns that they implement into the game as well. For the beautiful art style that they've created, almost looking like an Aardman cartoon or something. Like a Walls and Gromit cartoon, a Claymation cartoon to the way they've honestly just kept all the characters intact. Now I know a lot of people were kind of upset by this but they didn't change it, but to me changing the characters in this game would have been a disservice because they have beautiful stories to tell, amazing lives that you get to see, and in most cases they are some of the funniest people that you can ever meet. One of my favorite trading sequences across any single Nintendo franchise and there's a lot of them. And I'm grateful that this remake was able to streamline combat, it was able to streamline traversal, it felt good to go around this world, I didn't have to pause the game to change my buttons every time, there were separate buttons for shields and swords as it was for items, and going through this game a second time I thought it was going to drag, it was one of the quickest and smoothest experiences I've had and I couldn't have done it without the Nintendo Switch. My favourite game on the Switch, and you wouldn't even believe, it is Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of a Duelist. I played this game on the PS4 and completed it on the PS4, but there's a lot of uh, merit to playing it on the Switch. This game is a game I play all the freaking time because I'm able to just play it, just take it out of the dock and turn it on and there it is, and I can pause the game at any point, come back to it in a day if I wanted to, and it's still there. Yu-Gi-Oh! games are almost made to play on the Switch, and in this case, getting to play through the story, one of my favorite stories of all time, Duelist Kingdom, Battle City, against the Ori Kalkos gang, bros, biker guy dudes, and just seeing all parts of the original Yu-Gi-Oh! story along, along with every single part of the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX story as well. Obviously, they don't implement absolutely everything from those stories in it, they don't have all the duels in it, 
but they do have all the DLC from the original PS4 version free of charge in this game as well, so it almost feels like a more complete game. And honestly, this is a game that I will pick up and play at any moment. The PS4 version, I remember just like out of nowhere, I'd just be like, oh, I'll just do a duel against one of the computer generated characters. And it was so much fun to do. I wish, I hope, it's not going to happen with Konami that we can get some game on the Switch that is like maybe open world Yu Gi Oh! But I'm not going to hold my breath. But in any case, I love this game to death. There's a lot of games I'm going to be missing in this list and in this video. There's a lot of things about the Switch that I'm going to be missing in this video, but I just want to talk about a few games that I really loved. And in this case, I truly do love the Switch, and I'm glad that I was able to have it and play it for the past year. It definitely left a good impression on me. Again, it's not a console, and the thing is, I've never been about that. I've never been about like, oh, these big massive graphics, because you can have a game that's an 8K, but if the art style is ugly, it's still ugly. Let's just be honest. Well, Fire Emblem Three Houses and Pokemon, sorry, not Pokemon, sorry, Link's Awakening looks fantastic. And we're not done with the Switch. We still got Shin Megami Tensei Five that's going to be coming out in the next few years. We know Persona 5 Scramble is coming out in the West next year as well. We are hopefully going to be spoiled and even more spoiled. And who could forget about Breath of the Wild 2? And if you're wondering, why didn't he mention Breath of the Wild? I don't have Breath of the Wild on the Switch. I have it on the Wii U, but it's still a fantastic game. Gotta love that Breath of the Wild, and honestly, anyone who got to switch for Breath of the Wild is probably happy out too, because that is a perfect open world game. That's just my opinion. I'll see you guys very soon, I hope you guys enjoyed the Switch. Tell me something you guys enjoy about your Switch, and did you like your first year with the Switch? Or maybe it's your first two years with the Switch? I'd love to hear it.